Thank you so, so much for joining us today. Thank um, you. Yeah. Um, so just before we get started, actually, one of my best, I just want to preface one of my best friends and I saw you back in 2017 at the Hammer Museum. No I don't know if you remember way. that show. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. fans and just love just how you kind of oh explore different sounds and just how open Thank and authentic you. you've been as a person. So I just want to say that. And then, um, yeah, no, but before we kind of, you know, this, this present day, um, you've had a lot of like big collaborations with a lot of, um, you know, industry leaders. But I think take us back to the beginning, though. I uh, would love to hear more about your journey and how you got started. So if we go way, way back, I started playing piano when I was five and that was kind of like I decided to do it because my brother played guitar so I was like okay <laughs> the girly thing is piano which is so not true but mm -hmm. for whatever reason in my five-year-old brain I was like the piano is my thing mm -hmm. <laughs> so my dad bought me my parents bought me like a hundred dollar old piano and I just started learning classical piano and then that became like it became my life basically like i failed in school but i excelled at piano and like piano recitals and piano competitions and learning bach and chopin and debussy and rachmaninoff and all these you know amazing composers so that was a huge part of my life it kind of made me hate music in a way like, it kind of made me hate music in a way but i think it made me gravitate more towards electronic sounds and you know indie music and bands and singing and so i would always kind of get in trouble with my piano teacher because i would just like not be doing everything the rigid way that you're supposed to yeah i'd be like moving with it and i'd like make up little songs with these you know broken up classical piece chords so um so yeah and then i just started you know, since forever, since I can remember, I started just singing and making weird little songs. And then when I got a laptop, I had a garage band. I would just like mess around on that and experiment. And that turned into more songwriting. And then creating Elohim was a really beautiful experience because I was, you know, at a time where I, it was kind of like, what am I going to do with my life? And some people that I work with, they kind of took me under their wings and they let me use their studio and they were like, just come here and create. So I was like, would work a job during the day um, just to like make ends meet. And then I would go at like 4 p.m. to the studio in Santa Monica and me and my friend Danny, we would stay up all night and then I'd stay there till 4 a.m. come home. It was such a fun it was a really fun time because I really had no idea what was going to happen after that. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just complete freedom. It was kind of went into it, not even trying to make songs, just sounds and sort of like create this world. And so that was, that was how it all started. <laughs> I love that. Thanks for sharing that. It sounds like it's interesting. Yeah. So all the, it sounds like all the structure from learning classical piano kind of like led you away from from that realm sounds like you've always kind of been more yeah. of like a free spirit and you know wanted to like follow your own heart when, when it comes to yeah kind of like a rule breaker i guess <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 um awesome love that so then um i also read in one interview that you mentioned i make music to bring love and light into the lives of others i want to take you on a vibrant journey i want you to be free i want to spark something inside of you you that you didn't know was there and I love that so mm. it, it sounds like you've essentially found your why uh, when I was reading that right so tell us more about kind of like finding your why and your, your your purpose there with with music yeah definitely the why and my purpose with making music definitely changed throughout creation because you know at the beginning it was just this sort of I want to discover a sound. I want to make what makes me feel good. And then it really turned into, I want to make what makes other people feel good. Because when I put out my second song ever, which was called Xanax, that was when I started getting a lot of messages from people saying, 
oh my gosh, like I've never heard these types of lyrics in a song and I didn't know anyone else felt these feelings until I listened to your song and I can't believe someone else goes through this. Mm. And in return, I was like, I can't believe anyone else goes through this. I was just writing what I was genuinely feeling in that moment without the intention of like, this is going to reach so many people. It was just like, this is what I'm going through. And people might think I'm absolutely crazy and not relate to this. And it ended up being the opposite. It was like what people related to the most and you know what drew people to reach out and start conversations with me about mental health. And then I really realized there is a world out there and there is a community that is craving real music that tells real stories and you know, with an emphasis, I guess, on you know mental health, but it's like really just being human. Um, so I think that there became a greater purpose because that, you know, it's like you create and you're like, of course, I hope that all these amazing things happen in accolades and plays and tours and big shows and selling out shows. And I've done a lot of that, but the reason became so much bigger than that, because it's like mm. at the end of the day, that stuff goes away, but what stays is this message and this community of people that have come together and have had this, you know, kind of like life changing moments together. And, you know, I still go live on Twitch and we all talk about stuff and it's just been really cool to have that community. So the the purpose really just became kind of fostering and nurturing this community and just staying super honest throughout all of it. I love that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love that. And I'm sure a lot of folks can feel and can see that uh, through the conversations and music that you put out. Um, and speaking of like, you know, Xanax and also knowing that you're a really big mental health advocate. Mm -hmm. um, curious that um, kind of what are some of the things that you like to do? Because, you you know, you have obviously mentioned that you've had a, had a lot of like, you know, sold out shows and tours and things like that. What are some things you do both on tour and when you're not touring um, to kind of keep yourself centered? Um, on tour, staying centered has been difficult for me, definitely more difficult post pandemic. Um, but before uh i guess kind of finding friendships well within like your touring party that you know you can confide in you can hang out with you can go get coffee with um that was definitely really helpful um i'm taking a break from touring right now because it just it was too hard on my body and mental health um and i really i couldn't find my center and i couldn't find any calm and it was just it was it was so unbearable for me and you know my body and just my being that I had to step back and really like take a break from that and figure out this deeper issue what's going on with me so now that I'm home and I've been home for a few months and just really like focusing on me focusing on enjoying small things in life um mm -hmm. finding joy in things I love being outside. I love hiking. I like um, now I'm pretty into working out, which has been actually really helpful, which is so cliche, but it's cliche for a reason because actually once you do get into the flow of doing it, it really does make you feel empowered. And with that empowerment comes feeling um, less anxiety and less stress mm. um, and more calm because I think you just you know, you feel grounded in your own body. So exercise has been really important. Um, when I was going through that hard time, I couldn't eat. And so I, um, you know, just finding being able to eat, <laughs> it's kind of like the small things. I was, it was so bad. Like my baseline at that time, a few months ago was so bad. I couldn't even do like simple things like going to the airport would just like, you know, make me freak out. And I, I remember I was standing outside LAX and it was like five in the morning and I was holding a bag and I was just like dry heaving into it because just the anxiety and panic was just like, mm. it was just constantly in my body and I like couldn't get rid of it. It was horrible. Um, I wish it on no one. Um, and I, I, it's embarrassing. It's very isolating. Like I, it's so weird even saying it out loud. Cause it just, mm kind of seems ridiculous. Um, 
but but it's you know it's my truth and it's what i i don't know that it's my truth but it is something that i genuinely did go through so um so yeah i've i've really been like trying to find that calm and creating i i i've just finished my album last week and that's been really cool to go through the studio right um writing music and you know i had my piano right here mm -hmm. um sitting at the piano just playing writing mm -hmm. all of those things are really grounding being outside is really really grounding so yeah <laughs> Yeah, love that. So, I mean, it sounds like, honestly, that it's definitely, it's tough. And I hear that there's a transformation of that pain and, and struggle into passion and purpose. And, and yeah. it's, I hear you saying it's very isolating, yet, like, through sharing all that, it's also very, um, you mentioned, you know, hearing about people going through their experiences and how, like, you're not alone in your own experiences so in a way like you know building that community so it's interesting yeah. the kind of duality there so it's beautiful to hear you share about that um thank you i love your take on it it was really beautiful just like the no. way that you heard it and are saying it back was really amazing so thank well, you <laughs> thank you no no i truly yeah i loved uh hearing that um i uh what was it Speaking of kind of like touring and, and all that, I know you're on a pause, but I'm curious, like what have been some of your favorite moments? If you have a specific, specific story you'd like to share that comes to mind, feel free to let me know. But what are some of your favorite moments from touring? I've had some honestly amazing experiences and I often have to like go back and remind myself. And like, I do like to you know we all do but take little videos while i'm on the road and it's nice to have them because like the there's the really hard times and it's kind of like i actually filmed myself and posted it of me like going through like my really hard time and once i was in a good space i was able to watch it and it was like whoa i'm glad that i have this because i'm able to see how bad it really was and i'm able to realize how far i've come so that but on the complete flip side it's so nice to have the memories recorded of the amazing positive times because there have been so many like a highlight for me was coachella playing coachella it's a tent was incredible like you know one of those life-changing bucket list uh moments um same with electric forest that festival mm -hmm. so festivals are beautiful because it feels like they're really a place where people come together and it just you feel that energy together and you kind of feel like you're all one and it seems mm -hmm. like the energy is really positive at most festivals it's kind of like love is the energy it feels like mm -hmm. <laughs> um and then probably my favorite moments were on my 2020 headlining tour it's called the group therapy tour um sadly it was cut short because of lockdown happening so mm -hmm. but those moments on that tour that was like that was everything that I had worked for and it was like sold out shows and you know it was literally everything I'd worked for four years was finally selling out shows and having it be my exact vision and everything I wanted mm -hmm. um so it was really cool because there were a few times where people working at the venue would come up to me and they would be like, it, I, I don't want to bother you, but everyone, it's so crazy. It's so wild to see, but there's so much love in this room and Aww. everyone's so <laughs> nice. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I was just like, I, I feel so proud that this music, this message, this project, you know, mm. has brought together truly really kind wonderful people and i was like it just kind of like changed my perspective of everything i was like this is what it's all about you know mm -hmm. humanity coming together like being happy together and um and showing each other love and respect um because i've definitely been on tours that didn't feel like that with the crowd mm -hmm. um so yeah my 2020 tour was really really special i only got to do like nine of the 30 shows but it mm -hmm. was amazing. <laughs> 
I love that. Uh, I think like sometimes when I go to shows and, you know, you can kind of sense the culture that some of the artists have tried to cultivate. Some of it's like yeah. you know, out of our control, but, you know, honestly, like just seeing, you know, like what you're describing with like love and feeling all that love yeah. and on tour, it's like you created that, right? And through being yeah. honest, like authentic. Um, curious if that was something when you're, when you're creating and connecting with your fans, like that, you know, seeing what you saw on tour, was that kind of expected? Was that unexpected? Did you intentionally try to craft that or? <laughs> no. You know, I mean, it was just you being you, right? You know, like. It was just, yeah, me being me and, you know, for whatever reason, this, the music and the message and the project brought those types of people, just mm. really lovely, kind humans. And I'm, I'm sure that a big part of that too is that we all feel very deeply. There's a reason that, you know, certain people are drawn to my music and the lyrics and the message because it's very truthful about what I'm going through. I'm sure there are people, I've met people who are like, I've never had anxiety. And so I don't know that they would connect with it as much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think that definitely the, the message probably brought those types of people and we all just feel really deeply and I think there's there's power in that I think there's mm -hmm. magic in a weird way as hard as mental health and feeling all these feelings and being human is when you know the people who feel the deepest I think sometimes are the best people <laughs> mm -hmm. I love that um so I'm hearing a few things. One second. So the you you talk about the message of a song and and how people really connect with that for mm -hmm. your songs that you write. So I guess I'm curious a little bit if you could talk about the process and how you think about just creating songs because you're so you you're like very well rounded. You have you're the whole package. You can write. You can sing. DJ produce. Um, play instruments. But when it comes to writing a song, do you think, okay, like this is the message I want to convey, okay, then write, or you kind of yeah. just play around? Does it depend? Um, it definitely depends. Uh, every song is different, and then a lot of them have been created in similar ways. I have a song called TV, and I remember I woke up, and I just was literally mm. like, I woke up, depressed as fuck, I want to mm. sit around, and I just, like, wrote the whole song just sitting yeah. at this table, so sometimes, like, sometimes I feel like the, and then, and I was like, ooh, like, this feels really special, and then I went in the next day and, like, you know, started producing it, and I have, like, an amazing team that I work with as well, mm. I definitely don't do everything myself, but, um, but I do like to have my hands on everything. Um, mm -hmm. But lately, I love like this album. I worked with two producers who are incredible. And a lot of this album that's going to be coming out in the summer. I would. I wanted to kind of like go back to basics and just write a song. So I would either be laying in bed or just sitting in my car or something. And I'd write and just have voice notes. Or I would just sit at the piano and write and then take it and uh you know kind of pitch like I, sometimes i would literally go to the studio and just track my vocals to a click track so literally just like no music just mm -hmm. just acapella basically mm -hmm. um and then you would kind of dissect that pitch it you know uh change the bpm um and then kind of create this world around so this album actually mm. was kind of more the world was created around the message of the album because it was really created around the words and um and then just the bare bones of the song which i actually mm. really enjoyed doing so i was like i want to just write i want to just write songs um mm. so that felt really good because in the past you know i would go in and start from scratch and I still do this all the time, but um, start from scratch, like start playing a weird sound on a synth and then start writing to it. But this way, this way was really cool because I did pretty much all the writing by myself, just sitting mm. in my house. And I feel like that's when I can get the deepest. Um, so yeah, it, it's always, it's always different. And then people have sent me tracks and then I'll write to those. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the, I would say, I guess the best result 
is sometimes most of the time me being at home and like finishing a whole song and then creating like a track around it gotcha 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 um you mentioned something about world building um and I think that's (laughs) yeah I I think with with an album that especially I guess that makes a lot of sense in terms of like you're telling a cohesive story right so what what are some of the things that help you kind of build that you know world or cohesion when you're you're talking about like like do you have like a mood board do you like what kind of helps you with that um I guess what helps with the cohesion is this time I had a clear vision of what I wanted, whereas I think in the past it was kind of a lot of just creating, creating, creating without us, you know, a tra- one track mind. It was kind of like, OK, I'm making a ballad today. OK, I'm making a weird like pop song today. OK, I'm making like an electronic song. OK, I'm making one where I'm screaming, you know, so it wasn't this is probably mm. my most cohesive project. This one mm. that's going to come out. Um, I wanted it to feel powerful i wanted it to feel really strong gritty mm. i wanted it to feel empowering I, I you know i wanted to feel badass when i performed it and um i have this song buckets that skrillex produced which i made in like 2019 i think or 2018 um and every time i would perform that song it would just make me feel like a superhero you know like mm. it would just make me feel so cool and empowered um and so i was really like I want to I want a project that feels like that that gives me that energy that you can put it on and just be like feel like a badass um mm-hmm. so yeah I don't know if that answers it no question. yeah that answers my question and I think uh, okay, a lot of people well. yeah I mean I think uh, like folks can feel it when when you feel it right you know, the energy kind of radiates outward that way um yeah. so I definitely want to get uh kind of switching gears a little bit um gonna get a little bit reflective here it's uh it's yeah. been quite the journey um to say the least um so looking back what do you feel are some of your biggest or favorite lessons uh both when it become comes to being an artist and just you know in life in general mm. so being an artist stay true to you and be open to others, but not too open, kind of keep things close to the belt and don't let other people, when you feel it in your gut, don't let other people persuade you to go a different way. Stick to what you believe, Um, stay the path, stay the course. You have to just keep going, keep going. And it feels like, nothing's happening and then all of a sudden you're like whoa I've released almost a hundred songs you know and, mm-hmm. and you're like wow I've played hundreds of shows and you have to just stay the course and keep going keep going keep creating you just kind of have to dedicate your life to it I think mm-hmm. um and then being a human similar work hard it takes so much work yeah and only do this if you really love it and you really want to do it um Mm -hmm. it's you know you and you just you have to stay true to yourself in life and a a big one actually too is surround yourself with people who love you and care about you and lift Mm -hmm. you up and make you feel seen um people who have empathy people people around you that make that lift you up that make you feel really good um that's kind people it's very important (laughs) yeah totally um and then also curious about what you feel are the top three kind of traits or things that have helped you help to kind of get you to where you are today i would say the top three things that have helped me get to where I am today is hard work, having an open mind, and being myself. Mm-hmm. And what's hindered me is doubting myself. Mm-hmm. 
mental health. Not trusting myself, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and let's also not forget that you had uh, a release recently called Tiny Humans, yeah. uh, which talks about just how we are, how tiny we are in the, in the grand scheme of things, and also takes a, a mid-tempo twist. So we'd love to hear more about that. I love that concept, by the way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I think about a lot. I'll just be driving around and I'm like, what are we, <laughs> who are all these people? We are all so tiny in the grand scheme of things. We're like a blip on the radar and we feel so important at times. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes that stresses out, us out because we, you know, it, but also it's what fuels us because we're like, we got to be the best and we got to work hard and we got to make money and all these things. And, um and you know we we have to have confidence and stuff to to do all the things that we aspire to do but um at the end of the day i think it's so important that we all also remember to be humble and that we're all human beings we literally have all this is the one thing that i think we've all i've been trying to figure it out but i think the one thing we have all experienced is being in a womb mm. and we're all just these little like cells that are put together. And it's mm -hmm. so weird that there are people with egos, there are people, you know, that start fights and it it's just bizarre. And I see it a lot in, you know, the music industry and the entertainment industry, especially people just with egos and thinking that they're better than other people. And I think that it's it disturbs me to see and it frustrates me because i'm truly like we're all human and we're all mm -hmm. tiny humans <laughs> mm -hmm. no totally yeah um like why can't we just talk about anything and just like or like you see so like why can't you just see someone and have a conversation with them and talk to them like we're literally all human but we're kind of we all live in our own little houses and have our own little lives and it's so strange being mm -hmm. human is weird but yeah so i just am always having these like existential thoughts mm -hmm. think of the big asking the big questions thinking, big, <laughs> yeah. thinking the big things yeah <laughs> sometimes i wish i didn't have these thoughts and i could just like be the people that go through life they're like everything's great <laughs> Hey, it's fuel though, also. Yeah, like, you exactly. Know, I feel like people have been connecting with it. So um yeah. It's very interesting, also, just a little tangent, like just uh I think a common question that comes up is like, what is the purpose of life and finding meaning and purpose? And yeah. also letting that get out of hand sometimes, I feel. Um yeah. but yeah, so then uh gonna wrap up soon, but uh, basically, at Neon Owl, uh, gonna, gonna switch gears a little bit. So at, at Neon Owl, we like to um, host these open door sessions. We help up and coming DJs and producers and artists. Oh, cool. um, yeah, and then um, I just wanted to ask some of the the common questions that they ask. So you know, or this is out there, uh, get some advice there. Um, so first thing is re regarding branding. So a lot of artists mm -hmm. ask about how they might go about creating their own brand. Curious mm -hmm. about your take on that. My take is it is totally okay to draw inspiration from others, but you know, try to really draw from yourself. I think when you're the truest, most authentic version of you, that's what people will be drawn to because only you are you there's no one else that's you so i think you know just drawing from inside and really taking you know what inspires you what you love and just being a hundred percent authentic to who you are i think is so important and and hard because especially when you get managers or labels you know they're always trying to like pull you in different directions and i just signed to a new label actually and they've been mm. so amazing because they've been very like 
we want you, <laughs> we mm. want what you want to do, you know, and are letting me drive the creative visual side of everything. So it, that's been really cool. So for branding, I say just stay consistent and stay true to who you are. Mm. Okay. And then uh, that what you mentioned about signing to a new label and that kind of is a segue to the next one, self-release yeah. or label. What would you recommend? Um, I've done both. Um, I it depends on the label for sure. <laughs> Definitely, you know, I've had so many friends on labels, and you know, you hear horror stories, and not horror stories, but like you know, just like nightmare for an artist stories. Um, and labels can be great if you have a good deal and you have a good team, um, but also releasing independently can be equally as great um it can be really beneficial if you have the right team with a label because you know they're tapped into different outlets and um the dsps and all of that and it kind of it takes a little bit of like a weight off of your shoulder when you're not doing it independently and have to do everything yourself or with a manager or something um having a having a team that's sort of like this these pillows that you can kind of like land and two is really nice but it has to be the right team so mm -hmm. for me right now i'm happier releasing with my label and um because there's such amazing team and it feels like i finally found a team that i really love mm. <laughs> so i think labels are are good if you find the right team and people that believe in you people who let you creatively drive the ship and um and people that will give you a fair deal <laughs> mm. okay awesome um and then and the third question here is any words of advice for building a sustainable career overall in music having a music career is very very challenging it can look very glamorous because you know there are people out there who have talent but also got very lucky mm -hmm. um don't be discouraged by that don't compare yourself to other people you kind of have to like put on the blinders and i have to tell myself this it's so hard with social media to not mm -hmm. you know compare numbers compare why is this person playing this show and i'm not you know oh my gosh i feel like a failure and all that stuff um you know those are real feelings that at the bottom you'll have it and at the top i would imagine you'll have it and then somewhere from the bottom to the top where i'm sort of been just swimming around trying to like uh, catch my breath um you know you have those feelings and it's just you have to just keep going you really have to like love doing this because mm. you're pretty psychotic to choose this as a career <laughs> mm -hmm. for sure um, definitely takes grit <laughs> it takes a certain kind of person it does and like sometimes like i feel like a lot of the people i meet are like ruthless and would do anything for it and sometimes mm. i'm like am i just like not cut out for this but like i i just i do love creating and i love I love the creative side of it um but i also believe that we're all human beings and mm. that no one is above anybody else and so i think that's tough for me because i think a lot of these people who make it they feel like they are above everyone else and there's mm. something to that it's like that's what kind of like helps them get to that place you know so mm. so yeah that's a little bit of a struggle for me but yeah yeah i don't know if i answered the question no 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 that's great um <laughs> okay cool I feel you on the ruthlessness. Um, yeah, there are some folks out there. It's like, yeah, uh, we don't have I to mean, get like, into it. No, a lot. Yeah, but a lot of people would, you know, they're in it for themselves. And and you, mm -hmm. the thing is, I don't, I don't fault them for that. It's definitely like, a, you know, the most probably like famous, you know, artists that I've been around. It's like they have that thing that's like, they would do anything, go anywhere say yes to anything step over anyone to you know get to where they're going and they just have that like going 24 7 never 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 stop and um 
that's definitely I think you're maybe born with that or you're not (laughs) yeah yeah I can't imagine no yeah but yeah no I definitely like when I've been on the tour and going 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 you definitely like people would say to me like oh my god how do you do it and it's just like I don't I honestly don't know and then when you stop you're like how did I do that um but yeah it's it's a weird it's a weird world for sure this Mm -hmm. music industry world (laughs) Mm -hmm. this world and also it's a lot of it's a lot of smoke and mirrors too that's Mm -hmm. like that's a huge part of it too um right which is wild. Um, but then it's like at the, it's just sad because the business part of it always ends up taking over when it's like at the core of this, like, why are we all here? Because we actually really genuinely love music and it makes us mm. feel something that nothing else can make us feel that way. It's mm. a way to time travel. It's like the only way to time travel. You can play a song from your childhood and you're like, you could taste it, you could feel it, you could smell it, you know, it's mm-hmm. pretty wild. So You've thought about is, this. Maybe. Yeah, definitely. definitely I think about, about it a lot because, well, yeah, because I, I think about quitting a lot because mm. it's just like, it's exhausting. Everything besides the creating part is so exhausting and it's defeating mm. and it makes you feel like, what am I doing, you know? Mm. And um yeah like I guess the rat race of it all and and just the like fighting to the top and stuff and it's like what are we doing like aren't we making we're making music Mm -hmm. (laughs) music Mm -hmm. (laughs) so Mm -hmm. it's like it's definitely something that's on my mind a lot um yeah so and then you and then I'll go and create a song and write a song and and then I'll be like, okay, I gotta keep going. This is yeah. amazing. <laughs> so so that like, that's what you it. say, like keeps you in it, right? Like it's just kind of like that feeling that just creating. Yes, I t- yeah, I talk to a lot of my friends who like, you know, are artists or whatever, and it's it's a similar thing. It's like, you know, you have that feeling of like, what am I doing? What is my life? And then you go play one really good show and you're like, This is my, this is my life. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um well last question here what else is coming up for you know him in 2024 in 2024 i am going to be releasing an album this is my first fall length album in a few years so it'll be my second full length album but first one in a while um it is called the power of panic and Mm. it feels good to be putting out um feels good to put it on an album um hopefully my body mind human whatever will allow me to go do shows again but i'm not putting any pressure on myself i'm focusing on becoming the strongest version of myself in 2024 writing a lot um connecting with people even as friends um so yeah creating I just made a music video it felt really good to I hadn't done that in a while like a proper proper music video that I had you know that's super artsy and super weird and um it felt really good to drive out to the middle of nowhere four hours away and shoot all night and just like create this piece of art um it felt like because of the chaos of TikTok and short form content it just I feel like so many people have lost that passion for art Mm. because it's just like, how can we get these like clicks and these views? And sometimes I have to like step away from that and be like, well, you know, why am I doing this? And it's because we love to make art. So that was really cool. Um, So yeah, music video coming out, lots of music coming out, album coming out and um, focusing on being the strongest and best possible version of myself that I can be. Awesome. Lots of exciting yeah. things. I'm glad you're Thank taking you. some back to, to really take care and listen to your body. Um, Thank you. Uh, um, so yeah, that, that concludes our interview. Thank cool. you so much. I need you.